I recently went out. Uh, my friend was in town, so I wanted to have like a really good time. So I really wanted to even drink more to get my confidence up. I was at a party, got really drunk. I had been drinking. I was really drunk. And I knew I had to get home. I was like, oh, I'll just walk home. I guess I was like walking really crazy because anybody I walked past was like, whoa, are you okay, you know? I just remember kind of like falling asleep on the train. And I lost my way, my phone was dying, and the maps weren't really helping, so I wasn't really sure where I was going. And there was like this creepy guy uh, that just came up out of nowhere. And I just, I was really scared by this guy. And you know, I was a little drunk, so I was even more concerned. There happened to be a taxi driver driving by asking if I needed a lift. And eventually I was like, okay, I guess I'll need a lift home. Or rather my boyfriend tell me, no, like if a taxi comes up to you and says, they're gonna take you home, take the taxi home. And I did. And he was driving around and driving around and I was like, dude, you're not driving to my house. And he's like, just not saying anything. And then he pulled in front of my house finally, rolled all the windows up, locked the doors and said, I need your pussy. <laughs> right now and I was like please <laughs> like let me out of this cab and then I what I did was I ended up just there were some people that had come off the subway at the same time as me so I just started to strike up a conversation with them as if I knew them and to, to protect myself from this guy somehow I talked them into letting me out of the cab it ended up being fine I just got home really late and then the next day I found out like my friend was like looking for me up and down the streets. She got home and like the doors were all open all the way to my bed. Like I just... It would be the one situation where like you'd think, oh yeah, this is super dangerous. You idiot. Why did you do that? Because I had been drinking and everything that it's probably not a safe situation for me. Laws? Yeah. Uh, no. I like ones that protect me. No. Unfortunately, I don't. I'm sad to say. I feel like whoever the guy is, like what kind of story they're able to tell, I just never feel like it would even almost be worth it sometimes, like go through all that. Lower Matthew Galuzzo, scene one, take one. This is a question of New York state law when it comes to rape and sexual assault. So um, a woman obviously has to give consent for any sexual act. If she does not, then it would become a crime. And there are a couple different ways where she is incapable of giving consent. One is if she is mentally incapacitated, they say, okay? And another one is physically helpless, all right? Now, New York makes it very clear, however, that if you get yourself drunk or intoxicated on drugs to the point where you're unable to make these decisions, that basically that does not make you mentally incapacitated. Okay? It does if someone else gives you these drugs. But if you do it to yourself, it's kind of like it's just your own fault. It's basically what the law has carved out uh, for whatever reason. I didn't write these laws. I don't know. But there is a little bit of a loophole where, it, to close the loophole, they ought to say that if you are too intoxicated or drunk to consent, regardless of how you got there, whether it was because someone else put something in your drink or you yourself drank too much, you know, the person should not be able to have sexual conduct with you and call that a consenting act. I'm a father of two girls. I'm going to have to have this talk with them soon. They're a little young now, but this talk is coming. You know, they need to be careful about getting into situations that could be dangerous, right? whether it's you know, drinking too much uh, around people that she doesn't know that well. Be careful about being alone, you know, at night. Look, it's never a woman's fault. Never. I don't want to imply that it ever would be. But yes, it would be responsible not to understand that there are things you can do to be safe. Right? We, I, I'm not sure how it all happened, but you know, my friend and I, we were just like in bed and we were just we were just partying at like some of the local dive bars. We, we just got really drunk there one night and sort of were um, stumbling into this party at a cigar shop. The environment was just like, it just felt like this underground scene where everyone was just like smoking cigars. And it was like 
There was these guys. I, I'll just never forget it. I ended up like going home with one of the guys. Took these two Canadian boys home and had a great time. We took them dancing to Bembe on the south side. I smell like cigars for like two days. <laughs> and then they left, so it was really fun. It just felt like this amazing New York night. And I think that to me, I, I didn't worry about my safety at all. No, not at all. That was fantastic. <laughs> and if we play to where we play down here, none of it counts, none of